Rambunjan's ashrams have uh, many times water uh, tanks or ponds. For example, in Hal Korea, there was not only the Dev Daha, it's called Hal Korea Daha, uh, they called it Dev Daha for us, but also there was a pond. Um, it was along the way when you were walking to the so called meditation tree of Ramba Durbomjon uh, under the big banyan tree. So uh, we were not allowed to go there and especially foreigners, uh, the, the local lamas and nuns uh, used to go there. The, the people who were Bomjons near followers, they were allowed to go there, not everyone, but certain insiders who had been, I suppose, involved in the secrets of Ram Bomjon. And uh, because Jas Bahadur Vaiba, the old man, of Pilua, the king of Pilua, who used to be a mafia leader, according to his own words, and smuggling mafia leader in the area and who even killed people. According to his later claims, I didn't know it in the beginning, and he had a lot of guns and he deposited these guns inside Rambomjon's stupa, near where he was meditating. So this, this very same Jas Bahadur Vaiba was practically the only English speaking person who was available that time. I didn't speak uh, good Nepal in the beginning, in 2011. And so this Jas Bahadur Vaiba was the connection with the foreigners. But of course we didn't know his background right away. He, he was telling by his, uh, he was like proud of the fact that he used to be a mafia leader and now he's a religious person, Rabadur Bonjon's great devotee, blah, blah, blah. And so this uh, Vaiba was the only person who could explain us uh, certain, uh, certain things uh, which we didn't understand in Hal Korea jungle when we moved there to live there. And so I was speaking with him about this pond and just like, uh, what is that pond for? I was asking him, is Guruji swimming in that pond? And uh, do people uh, use that water for like uh, washings, etc. And Vaiba told me that <clears throat> never ever even think about Marichi, my name. Never even think about to go to swim in that pond. Because, you know, Nepal's jungles uh, in the Tarai, the flatlands, are really very hot. And it started to be hot already in um, during the days, yes, of course, in March, when I was still there, end of February. So um, nights were cool, but the daytimes are very, very hot. So uh, we were thinking, foreigners, like uh, in our culture, it's normal to swim when you feel hot. And so then you have a pond there with uh, attractive water, pure crystal clear water, a deep pond. It was very deep because it was very dark also. It was in the middle of the um, forest, the jungle along the way to Rambum John's uh, meditation platform and under the big tree and the stupa, which was nearby. And so Vaiba was telling me, don't ever think uh, to, to swim in that water or refresh yourself because there are very dangerous crocodiles and dangerous fish in that, uh, snakes in that fish. So, I mean, in that pond. And so it's very dangerous. Don't climb into that pond ever, he told me. Because sometimes when we were allowed to go to this inside compound of Bonjon for an in advance uh, announced blessing program, so the, the line was very long, the queue was very long. And I was just seeing, looking at this pond and thinking, why should we not be why should we not be allowed to use this pond? It would be so fantastic. 
And uh, that time we believed every, everything, of course, we were newcomers. So we believed that, I believed that there are crocodiles, but come on, there are no crocodiles in, uh, in a pond. Crocodiles live in rivers um, or in ponds which are adjust, uh, adjoined uh, by rivers, but there were no river in, uh, from that pond. And uh, it was always like a mystery, Brambom John's uh, pond which was uh, inside his forbidden area and according um, according to Andrea Good, uh, who was a more insider than me because she used to go to Rambonjon already a few times from 2008. She was there in 2008 and if I remember 2009 and 2010 uh, and I had to arrive 2010, but I didn't. I arrived 2011 to join her, to her invitation and to help her uh, with the English translations and editing. And uh, she was more initiated in the secrets and mysteries of Rambonjon. And she, at one point, when we live in the same tent, at one point she told me that Vaiba told her uh, that uh, she was initiated in this uh, insider information that uh, Vaiba bought some special fish uh, which was put inside uh, I'm sorry my hand broken hand by Rambom John is very painful to hold this <laughs> this phone so I cannot use my this hand this you see I am showing it in all video so the fish, uh, which Ram, very special exotic fish, Andra used this word, which is not uh, local for Nepali ponds, that Vaiba brought this fish to the pond. And Andrea was uh, still a Westerner who had some ecological uh, conscience. And she told me, uh, what, how stupid in a way like this, how stupid these ne Nepalis are because they don't realize that exotic animals uh, don't don't fit into this environment why should why had to bum why buy some exotic fish bring it to the Halkoria jungle six kilometers from civilization uh, i don't even know how do, did they bring it in in bags with water what was the purpose uh, to bring some exotic fish into the Halkoria pond. Just think about the whole absurdity. Because you have a very rich natural environment in Halkoria jungle and in the Terai jungles. You have tigers, leopards, many snakes. I have seen many animals, birds. Why should you bring exotic fish? Just for like a luxurious like uh, golden fish in an aquarium or something. It was not really uh, clarified. And the, the thing that Andrea told me was that this exotic fish brought in by Vaiba, I suppose in an agreement with Rambadur Bomjon himself, because nothing could happen without Bomjon's own personal agreement in his ashrams, so this fish ate up the local Nepali fish in that pond. And Andrea was like uh, holding her head and how stupid these Nepalis are. Why do they want to some exotic fish uh, which finally destroys the local um, like fauna and flora? And she uh, was thinking that it was like a stupid move. But uh, now please... Uh, start to think about this topic of some kind of exotic fish uh, which were poured into the Halkoria pond, not the big Daha, the big lake, but the smaller pond which later on dried up. It dried up actually during the time when I was chained and Mata Ani was chained in 2012, three months by Bomjon in that area nearby that pond and uh, this fish this exotic fish just eats up everything alive what is in that pond now uh, 
I have a very bad feeling about that after I learned from some people and it's it's in the open, it's in the Nepali media, the Trambum John had created a similar pond, man-made pond, also in his Sinduli ashram. And the Nepali media is, uh, they make interview with the Bom John's followers because Bom John is never interviewable. And they are saying like, like it's a mythical and legendary stories that uh, this pond and they are showing the pond was created by Guruji and of course by some workers at his order. And they were asking him, why Guruji, why do you need a pond here? It looks like quite a deep pond. And uh, he told that at one point elephants will arrive and they will need to swim in that pond. And the legend, the official legend, which actually never happened, but it's the lie what the followers are supposed to tell to the public in Nepal, is that uh, these elephants in fact arrived and took a swim, I mean, took a bath in that pond and uh, pff, there were, <laughs> just to have it more complicated, one of the followers are telling that I was even a scare, uh, afraid of this elephant, one of the elephants, and uh, the people told me, don't be afraid because Guruji had uh, reincarnated temporarily into the body of this elephant, so it's Guruji himself, so don't run away, uh, come on. Uh, the stories that uh, the followers of Rambunjons are telling to the full, to foreigners and to the media are like fairy tales and they are lies. Why I know they are lies? Because there had been other people as well present during the digging of the pond and during the uh, visits of the elephants and so on. And some, some other people tell a totally different story and uh, it's actually that the elephants did come but uh, they had been chased away because the typical reaction of Nepalis is uh, they are afraid of elephants because they destroy it. They, sometimes they have this anger, especially the male lone elephants but also the females when they have children, of course, and they are searching for food and anything what is in their uh, path, they destroy and they go to the food. And there are always food stores in Rambomjo's ashrams because they, they eat a lot and cook a lot. He himself as well. So the elephants did come, yes. But uh, there was nothing like they were taking a swim and so on in Bom John's uh, Sinduli uh, swimming pool. <laughs> but uh, they had been chased away and they had been even brutally chased away uh, by stones and they had been hurt by the stones. And local people also have seen it. And you know, Sinduli ashram is Rambom John's ashram compound, but there are also local people, normal Nepali people. And what the media is showing, they have very different stories about Rambom John's miracles, and they're not so happy about uh, the cult living in those uh, premises, because they, before they used to take uh, forest uh, products, uh, wood, uh, plants, fruits, grass, and they are not allowed to go there anymore because they are scared of Brambomjon and his men. So this is always the same story. This was the same in Halkoria. He fenced a uh, 700 bigger, I mean many dozens of hectares of land encroached in Halkoria jungle including the Dev, the, uh, the Halkoria Daha and the pond and the water, drinking water spring. So it means uh, local people had no more access to this natural environment and the fishing. So back to the story of the pond, uh, why did uh, Rambadur Bomjo need this exotic fish? 
in the Halkoria pond, inside his secret bend, forbidden area. And why is he making a mysterious pond? Of course, imagine it's not for free, you need some machinery, you need uh, the water to uh, redirect it from some rivers. It's, it's a work and it's a f you need facilities, you need infrastructure to make an artificial pond. But for some reason, for Rambojun, the ponds uh, are very important with some uh, cannibalistic uh, implanted exotic fish inside the pond. Okay, now let's jump from this topic to the topic of... Uh, I feel so bad to think about this even, of the disappeared followers of Rambomjon, because this is a fact. The Nepali media is interviewing the parents and relatives of the disappeared followers. You have dozens of videos. Unfortunately, it's not in English, but you can find the articles about the disappeared followers in on Setopati and the Kathmandu Post. So, uh, yes, you can, if you kill some people in Nepal, you can hide them in jungles um, and dig a hole and you can hide them in jungles. There are huge jungles. Uh, but at one point of time, uh, by dogs, it could be found, they could be found, or uh, their skeletons could be found in the future when there will be some construction work or anything. Uh, so, um, there is a possibility that Rambomjon's um, victims of violence, victims of rape, lynchings, many of them, there are, there are just too many of them. Uh, six of them are uh, mentioned in the media, but uh, there is also... Uh, Dr. Moore, the American uh, psychologist who had been killed, and uh, there is a Spanish woman who had been kidnapped and tortured by Bomb John in uh, 2007. She also, there are no news about her. She also kind of disappeared. And uh, Mata Ani, who had been chained and held two months during the time when I was held, three months in 2012, you don't uh, meet her, you don't hear about her anymore as well. So there are just too many people who had disappeared and who had been killed uh, by Bomjol, according to witnesses. Where are the bodies? Where are the bodies? So the Nepali police had stopped investigation of the lynched Sanchalal Vaiva, who had been lynched during the Maitri Puja 2015. Come on, Maitri Puja, religious gathering, where many foreigners arrive and bow to Bomjun and let touch their heads. Uh, this Sanchalal Vaiva had been killed by lynching by Bomjun and his followers in, at the end of this Maitri Puja. And the police is saying, CID, the secret service of Nepal, is saying we cannot um, accuse Bonjon and his followers of killing Vaiva because we didn't find the body. But there had been two eyewitnesses who had described the killing of Vaiva in details. And uh, Setopati has articles, Kathmandu Post has articles about these cases. So... Just because the body is not found, it's so easy to hide a dead body in a vast Nepali jungle. But uh, the body was not found, so Bomjon is innocent. And Vaiva's family lost contact with Vaiva after he returned to Bomjon, where he was serving 10 years as his, one of his nearest lamas. It's quite interesting approach. And uh, think about piranha. Think about piranha fish, the man-eating fish. Actually, there had been articles in the Indian media and Nepali media 
that during those years, during those years when I had been uh, kidnapped and chained, uh, interesting coincidence, someone had uh, realized, found, that there is a many eating fish in the Nepali uh, river. I think it was Karnali, Karnali, but I am not sure now. I will find the article and pass into this. And there is, there are many thing fish which had been not documented, not recorded before, but they invented, they found out that there are many thing fish in Nepali rivers. So there is this piranha of South America, which is many eating fish and there are a few other species which do eat people so in the same way like crocodiles would eat a human being when you throw a human being in the water but crocodiles could climb, climb out of the water in the ashram of, of Bonjon and could attack people also on the on the dry land. So this is probably not so comfortable for him. But when you have many things fish and you forbid your people to jump in the water and uh, tell them don't go inside because, I don't know, there is black magic in the water or anything. So they, yes, they, they do it. So what if, now this is just an idea, but what if Bonjon's uh, victims had been thrown to these mysterious ponds in his ashrams and uh, the bodies had been eaten up, digested by this piranha and you will never find them. And uh, you know, people who know me, they know that I am, I used to be very brave now maybe I am more scared already. And uh, in 2012, I, re I returned to, to Hell Korea when Bonjon was officially evicted. But uh, then there, there had been news that actually, information that actually he had uh, secretly returned to Hell Korea and he put his people there because local villagers told me later that they had seen Darshan and uh, other 